in this video we're going to have a look at crumple zones and how they work. We're also going to look at changes of momentum during collisions. So here is the question then. We've got two cars, car A and car B. They both have the same mass, 1500 kilograms. They both have the same mass of driver inside, 80 kilograms, traveling at the same speed. So exactly the same vehicle. One of the cars, car A, has a crumple zone. Car B doesn't have a crumple zone. As a result, car A stops in a much longer time, 0 0.8 seconds, as opposed to 0 0.2 seconds for car B. Okay. Our question then says, calculate the force on the driver and explain why crumple zones are effective. So we'll do the first part of that question. Calculate the force on the driver. We need to work out the resultant force and we do that by using this formula which is change in momentum equals force times time and we are wanting to find force so we need to rearrange that formula to get force equals change in momentum divided by time. Okay, We haven't been given the momentum of the car. We need to work out the momentum of the car to then put into our formula for change in momentum. And so we're going to use the formula momentum is mass times by velocity. Okay, The mass of my car is going to be 1500 kilograms but I'm also going to add on the 80 kilograms for the driver so the driver is inside the car that mass is important it's going to be 1580 kilograms the car that weighs 1580 kilograms is going at 20 meters per second that's where I've got these numbers from okay that works out at a momentum of 31,600 kilogram meters per second. Okay, really important number. The momentum of car B is exactly the same. The mass is the same for both the driver and the car and the velocity is also the same. So I can use this value for car A and for car B. I can then put my momentum into this formula for force. So we'll do car A over here and then we'll do car B. So the force acting on the driver in car A is equal to the momentum, which is 31,600, divided by the time, which is 0 0.8. That gives me a total force on the driver of 39,500 newtons. We'll do the same thing for car B, so that's car A done there same thing for car B. So the force on car B or the driver on car B is equal to 31,600, the same momentum that we had before. We'll divide that by the time, 0 0.2, and that gives me a total force of 1,005, sorry, 158,000 newtons. Okay. As you can see, the force on the driver in car B is much greater than the force acting on the driver in car A. What that means is that the person in car B is likely to be more harmed than the person in car A. Bigger force will do more damage. We can actually work out how many times bigger the force is for people in car B by taking the larger force, the 1,000, 158,000, divide it by 39,500 newtons, and the answer to that is 4. Okay, That means that car A compared to car B is 4 times the force in car B. Okay, So if I get a crumple zone, it reduces the force by 4 times to 39,500 newtons which is a significant reduction in the amount of force. Next part of the question is to just explain why that's a good thing and why the crumple zones are effective.
Okay, to, so to summarise, car A, the driver experiences a force of 35,500 newtons. Car B, force is much greater, four times larger, 158,000 newtons. So what happens if I increase the duration of a collision that reduces the force acting on the driver, which is what I want. I want the force to be as small as possible because that will result in fewer or less serious injuries